Well, guys, first of all, thank you so much oh, um, welcome, for making buddy. some time. And uh, first thing I wanted to ask is because, Hugh, you were at uh, the MTV Awards recently, mm-hmm. and uh, there was a, a photo that went viral of uh, Millie Bobby Brown meeting Emma Watson, and you were kind of in the photo, but it looked like they were in their own world. I wanted oh, they to... were, yeah. <laughs> what was that <laughs> moment like? Well, she had just... I think she just won and I was really sort of taken with her and her energy and so I had not seen the series so I actually, I knew, I thought, oh, I recognize her but I didn't know anything about her and I think that was me just like staring. Like, <laughs> yeah, a, my parent, a parent would say to me, stop staring, that's me staring. <laughs> but you know, they were, Emma was wonderful with her and they were both very, uh, it was just a cool moment, I was just... He was just, just watching staring. It. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure you hear this all the time. The movie's amazing. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm a big Taco Bell fan. So uh-huh. I wanted to know because you've got, uh, you know, Patrick Stewart talking about the case of Lupa. Yes. Uh, and someone You're pointed out. You're actually a big Taco oh, Bell Oh, you know what? I am. Where do you live? <laughs> actually, you know what? My, I'm from Pennsylvania. So, I see. Yeah. So they don't have good Mexican food in Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey now. <laughs> hey now. <laughs> got it. I understand that. completely now. How important was Taco Bell in the creation of the last Wolverine movie? Uh, well, you know, the funny story of why that dialogue's in there is I was actually offered a Taco Bell commercial while we were in prep. Oh, really? And while I was writing the scene, I wanted Charles, I was looking for Charles to say things, random things that indicated he'd been watching TV too much. Yeah. And I literally had this Taco Bell commercial script on my desk for the new Quesalupa <laughs> no, from Taco what? Bell. And that I just, uh, in my desperation to get pages done, I just took it and plugged it right in. Did that commercial that happen? Is, is that on air? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. They were offering <laughs> yeah. it to me or I I was in the running for shooting it, so it was a, but it's an actual, it was the actual text for an actual Taco Bell commercial, and at some point, I'm sure Fox Legal cleared it, and Taco Bell was, hey, if you want to advertise our case of Lupa with that, just do it, I'm fine. <laughs> can, can the commercial? It's done. <laughs> it's done. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for this last movie, how many different versions did you guys go through before you decided on this is the path we want Logan to take? And what were kind of those different things you considered? You mean in the script stage? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, well, I would we say the, thrashed about a bit. But, but the essential thrust of it, idea of it, many of the, the same, key things yeah. was the same. I think, I'm trying to remember, we really started with that, uh, Patrick and... You know that that dynamic of the two of us. I'm trying to remember when that, you came up with the idea for Laura, but that would have been six months after. The, right? Yeah, the very first like there there's stage stages. The first idea I came up with, even only months after we finished the previous Wolverine movie, was the idea of of kind of Hugh and Patrick on the run, and um, and Patrick having kind of some kind of mm. uh, Alzheimer's or dementia or something like that that. The idea of what is this world's most powerful brain like when it doesn't have control of itself mm. and and Hugh's character having to kind of step into this more paternal role taking care of him. And um, the idea of Laura or X-23 was also there, but those that does not a story make. Like, that's a kind of a launching point. But we thrashed around for a while trying to figure out how to start it, how to tell it, how much to account for where the other X-Men were and what else was going on and... and I think with every experiment, it became clear to us that the the at least for us, it's all subjective. The best version of this movie was the one that didn't do everything like mm-hmm. all the other movies, um, not just X Men movies, but in these kinds of movies in general. And um, and a lot of that meant not trying to tie up and connect every other character in the universe in the beginning, but just telling the story about the people who happen to be on camera right now. So that's another question I had. Do you consider this like more like a real life version of Wolverine and the other movies like kind of stories from a comic book? I consider this my my telling of of a Wolverine story with Hugh Jackman. Um, that I think that the concept of 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 uh, one thing invalidating or coloring, they should all color each other. I'm sure someone will follow ours and like how you perceive, um, certainly one of the ideas in the movie, um, and one of the ways we avoided doing the standard cutaway scenes accounting for everyone, mm. was to use these comic books as a kind of, um, uh, almost like a Bible that different characters had different reactions to this text. You know, children like Laura looked to it like it was holy, mm-hmm. and what the stories were inspiring, and characters 
like Logan's look to it like like uh, like an old ball player might look to, to reading these old stories and going that's not the way it was you know and that all things are true like that the it I, I, in a sense my position when we were writing the script was that I don't want to have a position because I think in life I don't know what really happened to this president or that ball player or this movie mm. star it's the, it's one word versus another so it's kind of like I think it's in the eye of the I, I I think the the comic book in the 60s was pretty revolutionary at the time where comic book heroes were pretty black and white you know and then the first X-Men uh, I think opening up in a concentration camp with a kid losing their parents was a little startling startling to people but I, I, I see this as what we were able to do and what the studio uh, allowed us to do was probably continue that spirit but sort of go to a deeper level and in a way let's mine this uh, Material, which is always, I, we've always thought the materials had the bones there for something very satisfying, deep, and adult, really. That's, I think you make a great point um, that makes me think of a, a, a... The idea to me of the X-Men movies is to keep asking questions and interesting yes. questions. Mm. Um, there is this, there is, and it comes from the dynamic of, of social media and your kind of media and fans, which is this need to make the movie's a never-ending 17-hour continuous whole thing that holds together and every... Um, and and I think that expectation, while I totally understand it for audiences, is one that actually hurts their movies. Um, mm -hmm. Like, like was The Dark Knight... Like, why was why did Katie Holmes become Maggie Gyllenhaal? Okay. Right. Uh, who cares? The, the Dark Knight is awesome. Like, it's like, in one sense or another, the fact is that getting hung up on that as if it's like gonna, it, it, why did this artist draw Wolverine differently? Why does Superman look different in 1972 than he did in 1964? Well, that's because human creativity is investing in these legends and mm -hmm. taking it to new places. And I think what you reminds me is that from the very beginning in the X-Men films, the best ones have actually been examples of pushing what a comic book movie is or can talk about mm -hmm. in new directions. And I think that is a lineage more worthy of kind of staying consistent than necessarily worrying about whether someone's blades have changed their their cut or their shoes are looking different this year. So you guys had the Deadpool 2 teaser before Logan, and it got a lot of people talking. Uh, I want to know, what are the odds you think we could see Wolverine and Deadpool together on screen? I, you know... <laughs> It's sort of out of my hands because I'm an actor who's played Wolverine. I'm I'm out, but I you know if I was running this studio and someone else was playing Wolverine, you know that's that's be something interesting. I'm sure that's that, something they could pull together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the uh, the reality is the reality for me is just I I'm ex I made two Wolverine movies in a row. So right. you're talking to a guy who's actually ready to direct Hugh Jackman in something else. <laughs> <laughs> um, this was a question that was uh, just a fun question uh, asked at the Alamo, but didn't make it to the Q&A. How often do you get called huge jacked man? Mm. It, it, it's not every day, but it does happen. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah, no. There was a, a story because that... Because I demand it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Did you work with The Rock at all um, for getting ready for this film? Because there was a story a uh, while ago that you... Yeah, no, I did a while ago. I saw him go from... When we did our, our first movie, The Wolverine, I had an idea of being really very different at first, like trying to go somewhere crazy different, bigger. That Remember I talked to you about the scarred thing originally? We yeah, were you're talking about, about on The Wolverine. Yeah. Yeah, you did go bigger. And we did go bigger. And yeah. so I, he had, my kids were watching a movie called The Tooth Fairy, where he's in ridiculous oh, shape. Sure, and then yeah. I saw a poster for something, Pain and Gain, I think, and I'm like, what happened? And I rang him up. And I'll never forget it because he, he was in his trailer. And whilst he's talking to me, there was a knock on his trailer door. And I just read, he goes, hang on a sec. He goes, I'm talking to the Wolverine, man. I'll be on set when I'm good and ready. <laughs> like, that was a cool um, this is uh, something that I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, but the Westchester uh, incident. I heard, did you f actually film something for it? No. You no, didn't? No, no, no. That would have been the most expensive sequence to film. Oh, really? Well, you would have had a lot of uh, very expensive corpses all over the place. <laughs> did, you, did you talk about which X-Men actually did die in that? Did we talk about it? Yes. But am I talking about it with you? No. Oh, okay. So it's just going to stay a well, secret. It would, it, well, honestly, it's one of these things where, where, where 
the re how would I put this the best way? I don't want to close doors where I don't need to close them on yeah. on future movies sure. and explorations. And honestly, the idea of exactly who came and went was less critical to us, and honestly would have been shaped by who was available to lie down on the floor and look dead um, that particular week and not. So that the the, the, the it really it, I leave it to new authors to determine what happened. And to the audience to yeah. work it out. Like to work it I out think for themselves. It's consistent. Yeah. There's probably ten things you can say about the movie where things aren't fully explained. I mean, we did a lot of work on science of genetics and remember that and I yeah. was you you were very smartly like, This is great, but this is not a science movie, you know. So it, it there's a lot of stuff that appears and happens and the audience work it out or they don't, you know. But there's a lot of clues. There's a lot of mm. thought in every piece of propage and what yeah. you see, the test tubes of the <coughs> everything, excuse me. Since, um, this is probably uh, my last question here, but um, <laughs> since we're not going to see Hugh Jackman's Wolverine kind of team up with the Avengers or anything at, at some point, what do you guys think that would look like if that did happen? Uh, uh, th that would look like a miracle. Uh, <laughs> on business. Uh, it's going to be a, a business <laughs> I, um, yeah, it's a shame. I mean, there's look. It's the reality of uh, rights and who paid for what and this and that. Um, but the comic books. We, I remember you said this, and it's right. One of the joys, the fun parts of comics, are comic book writers going, "What if you had yeah. Batman versus Wonder Woman in a fight?" You're like, and then next week there's the thing, you know, and it. Literally, that's what kids play when they're seven. Right, you're going to be this now. Nah, this battle, and you know. Right. And I get asked that question all the time. Who would win between this person and that? It's sort of. It's better not thing. to answer, though. Everyone has their own answer to that. Yeah. The, their own. But honestly, already with the characters they've got, the films have gotten so damn crowded that that <laughs> I'm just like, it, it would probably look like one of these selfies from the Oscars, where they're just <laughs> trying to cram in a frame. But uh, but of course it would be exciting. Guys, thank you so much.